Hi everyone, welcome to this new tutorial on Touch Designer. This is an English translation of a French tutorial I created. In this tutorial, we are going to create this sketch, which is a kind of blend between 3D and 2D. As you can see, the sketch, uh, when it's not playing, it looks like a 3D element uh, on a background. But when I will hit play, as you can see, pieces will move and you can really understand how it's in 3D. So it's basically an orth orthographic view, sorry. And this is what we're going to create today. Um, to create this sketch, we're gonna need the basics uh, of our render, so a box, and then we're going to add all the other elements. Of course, feel free to use other things uh, than boxes. You can import your own elements and play with that afterwards. It's also going to be even easier than the version I showed you before, because in the new version of Touch Designer, you can also create uh, instances with tops, which you could not before where you had to convert to chop. So this one is going to be, I think, uh, very interesting for every beginner who wants to use instances. So as I said, let's add our geometry and camera and lighting for the basics. And then we add our render elements. So this is the usual thing we do, add a null at the end and hit display so we can see it uh, before. And the next thing we're going to do is change our size to reduce it a lot. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be very small squares, but we are going to change our sizes within the instances. So as you can see, it's only a small cube right now. But to create our instances, we're going to create them with the noise, and we don't need to convert it to chop in this one as we had to do before. So first off, let's create a noise and then change a little bit of our parameters. We're going to create a six by six grid. So we are going to have 36 elements at the end. You can of course change that values, also convert to 32 bit float and change it from monochrome to colors and change the offset and amplitude so we can have values from uh, 0.5, minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 and we change it to translate. So if you go in instances, you turn on instances, you can drag this element in translate OP. And now you will have parameters uh, selection. So you can choose R, G, and B for your translation elements. And there you go. You have We have all of our elements and they are translated with our noise element. Now I duplicate it and call it size. And same thing I'm going to do is place it in size and and in this one, I'm going to choose R and G for our sizes. So we're going to keep the same size uh, for one parameter. And then we're going to change our values uh, for offset and amplitude. So we can bring our size to much more larger elements. The idea is to you know change the offset uh, so you can see the elements in the size you want. And then as you can see in this, uh, in this active view, it's pretty much what we want right now. So let's keep it to this for the moment. And also, of course, uh, as you can see, I just uh, duplicated the element. So now it's six by six, but you can also create some links, reference link uh, between the different elements. So when you change them in the first element, for example, the size, you can change also the size of this, of the uh, top uh, texture in the other elements. I'll let you play with those values uh, just to make this tutorial a little bit quicker. So the next thing we're going to we're going to do is go in our camera and change the view for something uh, different, which is orthographic, which basically uh, remove this perspective view and the idea of of, uh, of elements or which are further away from us. Then we're going to change and rotate our element to get the angle we had in the sketch I showed you. I'm going to change the values to something similar to the sketch I showed you. The idea is to get those three colors on the sides of the elements. So as you can see, there's three, uh, three different level of gray, and this is what it's going to be uh, useful to create this blending effect with the background. So let's change a little bit of the scale too. 
so we can see all of our elements uh, in our view. And then in the light, we're also going to change some parameters. So let's give it a color. So like this one, I'm going to go with some blue. And then I'm going to change our dimmer value, which is uh, the, the power of the light, uh, if you want, which basically means if you go higher, it's going to look more white. And as you can see, the idea is basically to try to get one of the faces of the elements, so in that case, the right one, uh, to be white. So you can check this out by clicking Active View and then displaying pixel value and look at uh, the pixels and see, making sure that it's it's white. And so you can so you can blend it in the white background uh, afterwards in the compositing phase of this tutorial. And maybe you can't really see it, but uh, those two blues are not the same because it's a point light. We need to change it to distant light. So the two uh, same faces are going to be in the exact same color. So you make sure everything blends. Otherwise, if it's a point light, uh, it's not going to send light in the same way to all the elements. So we're going to use this value for our compositing. We're going to create two constant elements. One is going to be white, and the other is going to take the value of the blue element that we have. So the, we're going to take the, the face that's the lighter blue, and we're going to use our pixel value and change uh, these values to uh, in the constant. So now we have our two backgrounds that we're going to add uh, to our sketch. So to change the different backgrounds, what we're going to do is use a switch. What, you, what the switch is going to do is basically let us choose uh, between the white and the blue background. So we're just changing the index. So between 0 and 1, you could add more limits if you want. Then we're going to use an uh, over element. Uh, you could use a composite, of course, and change the the um, blending to over, but let's just, for the sake of this tutorial, use a simple over element. Change the transform for input one. And now, as you can see, it's on the white background. And so the white really blends uh, with the background right now. The next thing we're going to do is, uh, of course, change it to blue. So as you can see now, the blue uh, really blends in, into the the, uh, the background too. So the next thing we have to do is uh, switch and animate between those. So we're going to check the blending element, which means that between 0 and 1, it's going to be uh, between blue and white, instead of just switching from one to another. And next thing we're going to do is animate it. So to do this, we're going to use a noise. Uh, you can change the seed to whatever you want. And also bring exponent and uh, roughness to zero. So as you can see, we're going from minus one to one. What we're, we're then going to change it to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 again, amplitude and offset. So now we're changing from zero to one. So this is our index values. Then we're going to adjust our seed and period. So we have the same value at the start and at the end. So it's going to fit well in a loop. So that's but you could, of course, change uh, these values to whatever you want. You can use also the constraint at the top, but uh, for now, I'm just going to use this uh, simply this trick, and then I will add a filter. So the filter, what if you change time slice, uh, as you can see, what the filter does is basically uh, create these, these curves between the changes, and it's going to make for really much smoother animation. As you can see, I use it as reference, and now the animation changes uh, in a much smoother way. If I hadn't used a filter, it it would work, but it's going to be more um, a big jump and cut uh, to go to our different colors. So the next thing we're going to do is change our values um, for, for the different uh, rotation elements. This is going to be the most complicated parts because we have a little bit of Python. So 
first thing we're going to do is use a noise. The thing we're going to, to use now is our length of 36. Of course, you can also use, uh, as I said before, you can use a, a reference, but let's first check time slice. And as you can see, now it's it's uh, moving from different values between zero and one. So I'm gonna change our amplitude to 18 and then offset to 18 too. So we're going to go from zero to 36. As I said before, if you wanna create a, a reference it's a better practice. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial because it's a little bit longer to make. But now uh, what we're going to do is use these values as a, basically an index to uh, which element to rate. So if I change the frame rate, uh, simple rate, sorry, if I bring it uh, to something really slow, as you can see, the value changes, but at a really slow pace. So as you can see, the value has changed, but it's very, very slow because uh, you basically say uh, at which, uh, how many times you want the values to change in a second. So of course, uh, if you, you go for higher values, it's gonna change really often. Now it's very interesting. So I think it's good. So also we change it from sparse to random. So it's gonna create some completely random values instead of uh, trying to follow a curve as uh, you have in a noise. And then we're going to use a mat to uh, give us a uh, ceiling value, which is basically the, the value of the index without the number after the comma. And rounding your elements is gonna really let you basically just use this value as an index uh, in the script afterwards. So now I'm just going to create a constant element I'm going to call this rot for rotation. And change this one for a number uh, for 36 samples. So this is going to create uh, just simply a line at zero right now. And what we're going to do is change this value with the script. Our script is just going to add one to uh, one of the 36 values. So basically, we're going to have to multiply it by 90 degrees and our elements are going to rotate randomly uh, following the index of the first uh, random noise element. So I place this one in the null, so I'm not going to change our constant element, but the null afterwards. Let's just move everything a little bit. And now uh, I'm going to create a chop exec. So chop execute lets you, of course, execute some script when the chop value changes. So what I'm going to do is use this, uh, this chop exec to, uh, when the value changes, use this value to add one in the null element right here. So I change the name of the element to rot. So we can address this by typing OP and then selecting our rotation operator. And then in the brackets, we type rot for the channel rot for rotation, of course. And then finally, we're going to type int to get the integral value. And we're taking the element val, which is the value that we received uh, from the chop. And finally, we do minus one to this value since this one is going from one to 36 and we want to have uh, something from zero to 35 in our rotation uh, operator. And finally, we add, we add one by right, typing plus equal one. And as you can see right now, our elements are growing from zero and al always adding uh, from the value of the index that's in the random. As you can see, this, these values changes what we're going to do next is do some math. So we rotate 90 degrees every time uh, this value changes. So first thing we're going to do is use a math right here. And 
multiply it by 90. So now we're rotating every time 90 degree. And also use a filter as we did uh, in our background elements. So use a filter. And we choose, uh, sorry, not time slice, it's a filter per sample, which basically creates a filter. As you will see, the value are changing, uh, but with a little animation. We can also change the length of this animation. So one second is maybe a bit uh, long. So I change it to something smaller. And now in instances, I'm going to change the values of the rotation element. Uh, so let's just drag this operator. And rotate in Y. As you can see now, it's basically the same sketch that you've seen before. The last thing I'm going to do is rotate the whole element uh, from left to right using these uh, the same kind of uh, chop that we ha had uh, to change our background. So we are going to have two values of left and right, and we're going to rotate them in the same way we use for the switch of the background. So I just copied and pasted these elements. I'm going to change our seed to something a little bit different. Uh, again, let's just try to, to have the same values at the start and at the end, and change our amplitude for 50 degrees. Uh, for 50, which is going to be 50 degrees in our rotation right there. I'm just going to drag and drop this element, and that's it. So now, as you will see, the whole block is moving from left to right, like in the first sketch you saw. So that's it, our tutorial is finally complete. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you will play with it and make it your own. If you have any comments or something, you want to see in the next tutorial, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.